Hi guys, welcome back. Scanlink here, we're off for a tutorial as well as a showcase on my Android phone. I am using a screen, AZ screen recorder on my phone, my Samsung Galaxy S5, my Android device. I am on my phone, as you can see. That is to prove that this isn't trickery because in this video, I'm going to not only give a little tutorial on how to set up a Bluetooth controller on your on your phone, like a PlayStation 4 which a controller, which is notorious for, you know. Um, working for 30 seconds and then just being unresponsive afterwards and not only that but of course just you know play a couple games on Steam Link probably like going to be a 15 20 minute video or something like that uh, but this ain't a permanent fix for the lag by the way this is only just like a temporary quick fix it does drop every so often but then it refreshes and let's get into that so first of all what you want to do and I actually have programs already available here because my control if my phone switches it messes up the recording so you can imagine how many times I've had to record this bloody video but yeah as you can see there PS4 controller is already paired it is already paired so if it's not paired already, what you want to be doing is that you want to press the PlayStation button and the share button at the same time and hold them until the bar, the light bar, blinks like my hand. And basically, then when you do that and you scan, it will come up as a wireless controller. Click it to pair it and rename it if you want to. I've renamed it PS4 controller, so I'm aware of which it is. Because otherwise it could be a Joy-Con or it could be someone else just walking across the, across the road or something. So, yeah. Once you've done that, then you'll need to install Bluetooth Auto Connect 4.2.2. Now, here's the thing. The latest version of Bluetooth Auto Connect on the PlayStation, uh, not on the PlayStation, the Google Play Store does not seem to do the fix that Bluetooth controllers kind of need. Now, I don't know why that's a thing, but if you need to download 4.2.2, uh, I'm not going to apply, uh, apply links to that sort of stuff. A quick search on Google. Uh, that doesn't take you to the Play Store. A specific search for version 4.2.2 should give you a link to the APK. Just set your phone to install from unknown sources for that one installation. And once it's installed, you'll be opened up onto basically this page at the top here. Then once you've done that, don't change any settings. Just do this exactly. Follow my lead. We go all the way down to the bottom here. Fingers in the way because I'm, I'm left-handed. And um, you want to click advanced options then on this screen you just want to scroll down and then you want to click connect now i'm not going to do it because i'm already connected so once you do that this should not lag in my case it still does but i've made a little bit of a change because if it still gives you lag after a good 30 seconds or something then you want to change the continuous connect seconds between 1 to 15 or something so it keeps refreshing the connection uh, are like after those 15 seconds so it's more continuous and at this current sub right now I only get a dis a, a, like I start to get uh, input lag or d input desync for a couple of seconds at a time but then it refreshes and it's back to being on point again so if I have a little bit of trouble I, I just got to wait a moment and then it works again not that judgmental really so keep that in mind but with that, we're pretty much done with setting up our controller. So now, with your Bluetooth controller set up, you can use it on your phone to navigate, play emulators or other games or anything else that's compatible with Bluetooth controllers. And that includes Steam Link, because it allows you to actually set up your controller for that. As you can see here, well, it says slow connection, but I can easily fix that. Give me a moment. I'll go to streaming here, because you'll have to do this as soon as you boot up Steam Link for the first time. Do, do a network test between your computer and your phone. They mostly recommend you to do in-house streaming, but I believe with a decent internet connection from one point to another, you should be able to do it fine. So it still makes PC gaming portable, technically speaking. Of course, you can use uh, your Bluetooth keyboards and mount mice as well. So if you want to do stuff like that. And yeah, so as you saw there, that was all good. My computer, my laptop is right over there. It's kind of custom. That is what mine is. And with controller, it actually detects it as a PS4 controller. And if we test it, I've binded the controllers, by the way, so it's more on point. Now, I'm going to tap. You're going to hear the taps, and you're going to see the result. If it does lag out, that means I'll have to wait a couple of seconds for it to reactivate. So, okay, hang on. Give it a moment. Wake up. There we are. Share options and touchpad. 
there we are. So as you saw there for a moment there, I just had to wake up the controller a tad and then it reconnected and then every button is on point, baby. So that is pretty sweet. So my controller is working. If it does drop, just wait a couple of seconds, it'll reconnect and we're good. So that eliminates most of the issue because if you if it didn't refresh the connection with with Bluetooth Auto Connect, after those first initial 30 seconds, most of the time your buttons are just not going to do anything. It's like it's unresponsive. It's connected, but it's just not good enough. So with this fix, it makes it work to an acceptable standard. So it's not 100%, more like 90%, but it, it works enough for you to actually use it. So with that... We're now just going to mess about, so I'm going to click start playing. Remember this is a stream from the computer through the internet to the phone, and... Oh, don't do this. Hang on. Before it, before it does that, I'm just going to do this quickly. Because if it, if, if it kicked me out, like, completely, that would have been bad, because my, my phone would have went, all, like, the other way with, on the home menu, and that would mess up the recording, and I don't want that. So, okay, so there must have been something wrong there. There we go. So, there must have just, it must have just hiccuped or something. And sometimes, um, because I'm recording as well, I'm recording at 30 frames, but it does output at 1080p 60 frames depending on the game. Uh, but that's what it normally goes for. And, yeah, it is working right now. It is working right now, because I'm looking at my laptop over there, so I know it's working. But, yeah, because, I'm, because it's a stream, you can get some stuttering. Because it's not a direct beam, it's like, you know, a stream. It's going to it's going through the internet to your phone, and you're just basically looking at a video of what's actually happening on your actual hardware. It's basically remote play from PS from PS Vita to PS4, for example, or PlayStation TV. So, think of it that way. But, other than that, it pretty much makes your PC games... Give it a minute, there we are. Portable. So that means we get all the kind of games that you'd like to, um, you know... Uh, have access to like Freedom Planet. That's not portable. Hat in Time. That's not portable. I mean, the Switch can't accept Hat in Time because it was made in Unreal Engine three, and Switch doesn't accept that. Only Unreal Engine four and above, and that's a thing. There's a plane going over. I don't know if I can be heard or not. Probably is. Indie carts. <laughs> RPG Maker VX. I mean, you can actually click around if I just do this like quickly. If I click here, the, you do have mouse support, so that's cool as well. So, the touchscreen is pretty much a mouse, so that's cool. And of course, if you need a keyboard, Bluetooth keyboard works as well. So, yeah, uh, I'm just going to... These are the three games that I've used to test these. So, we're just going to mess about with a couple of games here. Freedom Planet, why not? Get some Dawn Bennett in this shit. It, that was instantaneous, and yes, it is in big picture mode. And if you do minimise big picture mode, you can actually access your desktop. But you won't be able to get back in because the desktop's like slightly bigger than your actual phone screen and because you can't move the screen with your with the touch screen because that acts as the mouse, that's kind of a problem. So yeah. Now as you can see here, I'm having a few um, frame drops in the stream um, from the computer because it's still running smoothly 60 over there. Um, that not only is that attributed to internet connection, but that could also be attributed to me recording at the moment. So what you're seeing, take with a grain of salt because I'm actually recording it. If you're doing it yourself, remember that the app, the Steam app, is free. That's the thing. They do actually remain, remain, uh, recommend you to use a Steam controller, of course, because it's their own controller. But, you know, if you can get anything else to work... Hang on. There we are. Yeah, I had to wake up for a moment there. But yeah, let's go uh, time attack. If I get confused with the buttons, it's because they, I prefer jump on circle with this kind of controller. But uh, that also means that it's confirm, which I prefer to have X being. So, that's a bit of a problem. So yeah, if it's a little bit stuttery, it's not 60 frames, take with a grain of salt that I am recording, so that could be the factor. Okay, I've got a bit of input lag at the moment, let me wait a moment. Okay, now it's back on point, there we are. So let's kick you in the face, jump up here, jump up here. I wanted to do a cyclone, I didn't tap the jump button correctly there, there we are. Come down this way. Run over here, dragon boost. There we are. So yeah. This could be quite fun, considering that, you know, there is no actual portable version of Freedom Planet. It's actually kind of ironic, really, because, you know, it's um, quite... It's a 2D game, it shouldn't be that hard to port to the 3DS, but maybe it's because of the aspect ratio or something, I'm not entirely too sure, because this is always a 720p, um, you know, widescreen ratio. It's not nothing 
uh, proprietary because you know the 3DS screen is a little bit different. PSP, PSV, well I guess the PSV I could do it because you know you can download it on the P this game on the PS4 so maybe PSV, I'm not too sure. I haven't checked that myself but yeah and it's funny really because when I was playing Freedom Player for the Le uh, for the Let's Play I made mention of um, Indie Carts. We're actually going to try a bit of that out for this video so hang on I've got a bit of input lag going on. There we are, now it's back to normal. So yeah, it does intermittently drop every so often, but because we've got all, um, Bluetooth or Connect, it does refresh the connection quite often. So if you do have a little bit of issues with controlling, just wait a moment, it'll reconnect, and you're all good. So like I said, it's not 100% with Bluetooth controllers. If I was using a Steam controller, this will probably be, like, pristine in terms of um, button, like, uh, input uh, lag not being a thing, but, you know... This is a good little workaround if you don't want to be shelling out the money. And most people probably have a PS4 controller anyway, or any other controller to use on PC, because Steam does have those options. Plus, I don't exactly like the Steam controller because there's no actual, like, control pad. It's a touchpad. But that's because it can, like, emulate a mouse as well, I guess. Like, the touchpad of the, uh, in the middle of a PS4 controller, so... There we are. Get some of these. Jump over here. There we are. So... As you see there, I didn't have too much trouble. I mean, the, the, the uh, frame rate is a little bit, bit to be desired, but as I said, if I wasn't recording, that would probably be a lot better. And not only that, I'm recording at 30 frames, so it's not the best as well. But that's because that's what my phone handles. I mean, when I record Pokemon Go, the reason why I stu that it stutters a lot is because that's a very resource-heavy game on my phone, and I'm recording it as well, so that's why it, it looks a lot smoother when I'm not recording. And it also works better when I'm not recording. So, yeah. No, I need to press X because that's the backup, even though I prefer that to be confirmed. That's also attack, which I like to be. You see why I have issues with, like navigating the menus on this game. It'd be nice if you could assign them differently. But yeah, if we quit, we're back onto um, big picture mode. So circle to back up because that's what I prefer. Let's try indie cards because let's just segue properly because... I've talked about this before during the Freedom Planet um, Let's Play because um, both Carol and Lilac are in this game and funnily enough they're really the only uh, indie characters that I know from this game except for a couple of characters from Guacamelee which I haven't played and uh, Bitrunner I believe but yeah this is pretty much just like a um... there we are my controller wasn't responding again but now it is yeah this is pretty much just like a Super Mario Kart kind of uh, fan made game clone kind of thing and yeah we've also got like um hang on where is it ah there we are fortune knight from freedom planet and we've also got the new dragon valley from freedom planet i'm not going to choose dragon valley because that's a nightmare to navigate uh but of course i am going to choose fortune knight uh yeah there's guacamelee i don't know what these guys are from to temple deluxe yeah never heard of it to be perfectly honest with you uh, but yeah, if we go down here, we got Carol. I mean, I guess it's the only time I am going to show it off, so I'll probably link it in the video anyway. But yeah, Carol T on her actual bike. And we've actually got Lilac, who used to be in a blue car, but now is actually a little bit more colour-oriented to her design. I mean, I guess it was too much blue, so now it's a lot more pink. So, but yeah, of course I'm going to play as her, because I prefer being in a car than on a bike. In fact, Carol does uh, drift quite wide, so... Oh, I, I say wide, it's more like that instead of like that, so. So yeah, like I said, frame rate could be attributed to both the internet connection and I'm um, actually recording it. It'll be a lot smoother if I was not recording. I uh, don't know how that's going to... Yeah, I avoided out. <laughs> I didn't make the jump correctly. That was my bad because I, I hit it at such an angle. The frame rate is probably what's going to be messing me up at this point, but like I said, if I wasn't recording, I wouldn't be having much trouble at all. Oh, I hit a wall. I didn't even see that, which is funny, because... What was that dude just sitting there for? <laughs> he was a CPU! I think he got drunk. So yeah, that jump is a problem. Oh my god, okay, that was the frame rate of the stream. That messed me up there, that's fine. I'm probably not going to do the best here, but like uh, I keep saying it. If I wasn't recording this, this will be a lot smoother. I'm just having a really bad uh, resource dump here. Oh, I think my inputs have gone again. No, no, they're back again now. Okay. Yeah, probably. this is probably not the best game to play on on my water device. 
unless you were using an actual Steam controller. It's a shame. There, there will be one thing I will say. It's there's a shame that there's no actual on-screen like controls like what most emulators offer. I mean, I prefer using a controller for tactile feedback, but the the option would be nice because you can adapt. It may not be the best, but it is going to be a little bit more reliable than a controller that is not 100% supported by Android. Remember, even though Steam recognizes it as a PS4, it's the it's your device, your phone, that's actually taking the input, so not the, your computer, because you're not going to be near it. That's just an internet connection streaming it to here. The app on the phone is taking the input from this, from the phone, and the phone is the thing that's having trouble reading this. So, you got to take all that with a grain of salt. But, yeah, let's uh, quit here. There we are. And finally, I think we're going to go for a hat in time, a little bit of a teaser for the Let's Play that I've got planned on my 100% walkthrough, true 100% walkthrough. And that actually gives me a bit of a time to talk about this screen, because I'm not going to be able to actually show off this particular splash screen or any splash screen when you first boot up the game, because it's a separate window. And OBS doesn't like capturing it for whatever reason, unless I capture the whole entire desktop, which I don't really want to do. So, I mean, this is inconsequential anyway, because it's just loading. I mean, you can see it's loading all the uh, all the mods that I have installed right now. And, yeah, it is a completely separate window blown up on this screen, so... But that's probably big picture mode doing that. I'm not going to be recording in big picture mode. I'm just going to just boot up the game normally. And, because big, I think big picture mode is a little bit more uh, graphically intensive, because it's a whole UI, so... Like a GUI, instead of just, you know, clicking something on Steam and booting it up. But, yeah... Which is, and it's funny as well, because those sprite games have a look, ha, like, in within the stream, kind of drop. This does not drop. This actually runs a lot smoother, visually. So, yeah, so that's my true 100% file that I'm going to be replicating for the Let's Play. But this is a copy of that one that I mess about for mods. As you can see, it said mod rift tokens. That's kind of different. There's, thir there's, thir there's supposed to be 38 yarn remaining, but I've got 39 because I've got one in a mod. So, yeah, I didn't cheat. I didn't cheat. Yeah, look at this. I'm playing Hat in Time, and I've already played, a, a, like, Freedom Planet as well, and if I set up my controller in Undertale, I can play Undertale on the go as well. The Switch version isn't even, like, out yet, so... And this room, the mail room, is how you access your mods. The, uh, lab where you get, like, the, um, one of the, uh, relic statues, like these, <laughs> is in a different location, which a rift used to be in there and the rifts are kind of like mario like levels and look at me i'm walking around with a cappy on my head ha ha you let's just jump on it oh jump on it oh, oh i can check that by accident that was my bad let's just check the cap and jump on it Boing. so yeah i've changed my graphics just slightly for this just in case i've changed it from 1080p to 900p and i've changed it to 30 frames for the sake of recording which is going to be how i'm going to record it later on as well um Normally, though, my computer can handle 1080p, 60 frames, but OBS just does not, it just drops frames when I record at 20, at 60, and it makes it 20, so just a decent 30 would do, and yeah, that was, that, that, the stream kind of just lost it for a moment there, <laughs> that you did, it wasn't just you, that was me as well, I saw that, but that's because I'm probably recording, so that probably don't help, so what I'm going to do is actually go to that, uh, rift that I was talking about, and just, no, I want that one, there we go. I don't normally play this game with a PlayStation controller either, which is funny because it is actually available on PlayStation, so... Yeah, but what I want to do is just uh, hop into this here. I mean, I haven't actually had controller input drop for quite a bit, actually. It's kind of crazy. You can see that I'm not having it, like, much trouble navigating. It's just because the stream keeps dropping, I'm losing my place. But yeah, rifts are kind of like um, Sumay Sunshine, like obstacle courses to get a timepiece, which is the equivalent of stars. And yeah, I'm just going to platform. On my phone. <laughs> hopefully, input lag doesn't happen, and hopefully, janky camera angles or oh, please don't hit me! Oh, Jesus! All right. In fact, if I change. No, 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 no! What happened there? I was still holding the button. Oh God! The... Okay, input lag and stream lag. That did not help. <laughs> that was both stream lag and that was also input lag. Thanks for that. I'm guessing when the stream loses connection, so does my inputs, because the computer isn't reading my inputs. Yeah, okay, let's try that again, because that was that was bad. It seems to be running a bit smoother now. I wanted to chuck a bomb at these things to kill them, so that exact thing didn't happen, but we just had a lot of frame stirring there. Like I said, if I wasn't recording, that probably wouldn't happen, because I have decent internet. 
It's just because my phone is doing quite a lot of things at the moment because I'm recording. And that's audio as well, by the way. That was just bad luck. I forgot he was there. In fact, I can, I can get back there pretty quick. Let me just do this. There we go. Flips. This is actually one of the harder um, rift in the game as well, and I haven't played this game in quite a while, so that probably don't help matters. And I'm also playing it on a small screen. I'm used to be playing it on my TV or something. There we are. Aha! All my, t all my computer monitor, of course. No, oh, no, that's input lag. That's input lag. Give it a moment. Give it a moment. There we are. We're back. We're back. We're back in business. That that was my P that was my PS4 controller temporarily conking out, and now it's gone back in. It's not the controller. It's just its compatibility with Android, as I've said. That's why we have this fix, because otherwise it will be permanently like that after 30 seconds of connecting. All right. Can I hit you guys? I'm not gonna be able to hit you guys, am I? I'll just do that then. There we are. No, nope, nope. Got him. Almost got knocked off there, but I got him. Booyah! There we are. So, don't know why I'm doing this whole entire thing. But you know what? I'm gonna stop it there because I want. Oh shit! I pressed the home button. I wanted to pause. <laughs> In fact, I could probably do this now and exit the game. Can I do that? No, I don't, like I said, I don't, oh yes I can, I don't normally use big picture mode, so I don't normally have access to this menu, so. There we are, exit game, oh, on that will be lost, that don't matter to me. But yeah, I'm, I wasn't going to complete that entire course on the screen, because I've got, because I've got to do that for the Let's Play, and it'll be a better quality anyway. But yeah, this was just basically a nice demonstration, showing off, um, not only the Steam Link, and just playing a few of my favourite games, on my phone, away from my computer, even though it's just over there, but that's not the point, if I was in a different room, or, you know, um, I had, like, I don't know, it's like, it's just away from the computer, if I have decent internet connection, and you can use it out of your own, you're out of, like, the same internet connection, because I think it has to be on the same actual one, it's just, it's just a good time, you know, I mean, it, it just makes it, so it's technically portable PC gaming, and that, that's pretty sweet. So, until the Switch gets Undertale, this is a way you can play it. Don't know how one shot's going to work, but even though you can access your um, desktop, that'd be a bit odd, because you won't be able to get back into the game otherwise, because of how uh, the desktop's loaded. But yeah, tutorial for getting a PS4 controller to work with mostly no la input lag. It does happen periodically, but it also fixes it for a decent amount of time. As you can see, I only had a couple of problems, plus that's a very difficult level. And not only that, but... We played a few games on Steam as well, so I hope you enjoyed this video guys, and I'll see you guys for whatever I do next. See you guys next time.